Over the past 100 years, Christianity has become no different than many of the universalist ideologies that have become colorblind and cultureblind. By absorbing both liberalism and Marxism into its core themes, it has merely preserved the universalist and altruistic ethics of its original creed while dumping its metaphysical sanction in doctrine, scripture, and patristic tradition. Most mainline Protestant sects went light years ago. They became essentially a spiritual cheering section for the DNC and political personalities such as Angela Merkel. Now it would appear that the Roman Catholic Church is hell-bent on transforming herself into one more variety of this Christianity light, and doing so with the help and support of the ever-malignant George Soros. It is hard to think of good old Georgie boy without retching, a multi-billionaire driven by an ideological fanaticism to change the Western world utterly. He is a perfect specimen of the kind of thinking that lay behind Esperanto, an artificial language with a concomitant universalist utopian philosophy that enthralled his father, the Hungarian Tivadar Soros. Esperanto, which was invented in the 1880s by the Russian Jew Ludwig Zamenhof, was meant to be more than just a means of easy communication. His dream was that this new language would grease the skids for universal peace and brotherhood in a socialistic world unity. Esperanto, therefore, always had a political dimension apart from its linguistic identity. The Soros family has kept that dream alive, and seeks to render it a reality via their money and influence. And it would have been rather difficult 60 years ago to imagine such a man as George Soros cementing a friendship with the leaders of the Roman Catholic Church. For centuries, it had stood as a kind of bastion and bulwark against all forms of left liberalism and all varieties of socialistic dreaming. So how could the hierarchical traditionalism of the Vatican and the Holy Office be conjoined with the pipe dreams of Esperanto one-worldism? Today the visions of George Soros are looked upon with a kind of sympathy in the higher ranks of official Catholicism, and particularly by the present-day Pope. The unlimited wealth of Soros, combined with the still considerable clout that Catholicism has amongst millions of simple people, now seems poised to achieve what the left has never managed to accomplish, a truly global revolution one that will encompass all nations and all persons. Such a world revolution will not simply be the fruit of well-placed financing and political propaganda, however. It will also need a new evangelism, an evangelism not rooted in any dogma, but of a tsunami of mindless emotion. A species of smiley-face crackpot Franciscanism will rule the world, surfing a massive wave of love, brotherhood, multicultural acceptance, ecumenism, and the Pope's garish smile. The real interest that the globalist left has in Catholicism is not religious at all, but rooted in an envious admiration of the Church's disciplinary and administrative structure. The left dreams of an ideological hegemony over the world, one that is backed up not merely by force and money, but also by a kind of unassailable metaphysical sanction. In the liberal left's view, if Catholicism could be shorn of its atavistic attachment to certain dogmas and practices, it would become a perfect engine of social control over mass populations. This is the real driving force behind the Soros attempt to forge links with the Vatican and with the freakier elements in the post-Vatican II Church. The left's long-range strategy foresees a new and utterly transformed Catholicism, one directed not towards heavenly rewards, but towards the secular goals of progressivism, humanism, environmentalism, international consensus, and the utter extirpation of ethnic and cultural identities, and in particular, European ethnic identity. In short, the left wants the church to become a world-encircling NGO, propagandizing its flocks into an acceptance of a progressivist socio-political agenda. The carefully orchestrated election by a cabal of radical cardinals of the somewhat simple-minded leftist, Pope Francis, was a major step in this direction. This is the real motivation behind the current push by the church's left wing, for a new evangelism and for non-doctrinal pastoralism. It's not to spread Catholicism in any traditional sense. Soros and Pope Francis want Catholicism to forget its actual identity, but not its historic commitment to the endless missionary work of conversion, and the cradle-to-grave inculcation of obedience and lockstep belief. Apart from a vociferous conservative Catholic blogosphere, there is little real effective opposition to long-range plans to Bolshevize institutional Catholicism. Those in the hierarchy who aren't enthusiastic partisans of the scheme are largely time-serving careerists who will go along to get along. Ask them if women should be ordained priests or if gays should be married in a Catholic ceremony and their typical answer will be yeah, sure. For the average Catholic layman is now a soft left libertarian who is indifferent to both abortion and contraception. Whether the Soros church plan will ultimately succeed depends on several factors. 
apart from a supernatural intervention from heaven, the only earthly hope of frustrating the scheme lies with that small minority of the Catholic laity who are alive to the cultural and racial catastrophe that now looms over the Western world. Soros and Francis both have praised the influx of refugees into Europe, the Pope in particular expressing the outrageous idea that Catholic Europeans should be willing to sacrifice their national identities as a way to welcome and assimilate these invading hordes. The Pope's ploy backfired, as the rise of the new populist right in Europe seems to suggest. It is one thing to be a good Catholic, it's quite another to be a Frenchman or a German who watches as his homeland and culture are degraded and despoiled by uninvited vandals. Simply put, this Pope is the first fully-fledged and undisguised operative of the New World Order, and the globalist elite will defend him at all cost. And since they have not been catechized in any significant sense, they don't really care what heterodox or heretical statements are made by priests. Those viewers here who are anti-Christian will merely shake their heads in unsurprised disgust. After all, if you hate all universalist religions and philosophies on principle, there won't be anything shocking to you in the fact that a universalist faith finally reverts to type and ceases to be a weapon of defense for a particular culture. What we are in fact witnessing is a major seismic shift in the Western world. The austere Latin of St. Jerome has given away to the zany Esperanto of Ludwig Zamenhof. The institutional Catholic Church is likely to become, over the next decade or so, simply one more megaphone for globalist corporatism, multiculturalist propaganda, and an NGO for politicized philanthropy. Whatever glorious history the Church may have had as a defender of European culture and tradition is now a closed book. Unless, of course, you are still waiting for divine intervention.